G'day, we are in the brewery again for another brewery series video. I'm a little bit excited about this one. I'm glad I left the tasting and review vid uh, a little bit longer than planned. But this happens to be Bob's Beers uh, Surfers XPA. And I'll just, before we get in and have a look how I brewed it, I'll tell you right now, it just won a bronze medal in the International uh, Australian Beer Awards. So that's not just the Australian Beer Awards, it's International Beer Awards, so people can send beers from all around the country to enter. And from all around the world. Uh, and this one run a bronze medal, and we're going to have a look how it's brewed, and then we'll come back for a tasting. We'll have a quick look at where the brewery is. This here is the beautiful surface paradise. If you've ever been there before, there's no doubt you would have walked up Cavill Avenue. That's just highlighted on the map there. That's where the main mall is, surface paradise. Bob's is just a short walk up Orchid Avenue, and I mean short, it's about two minutes at the maximum, and it's on the corner of Elkhorn Avenue, and Orchid Avenue. Or of course, you could walk up the Esplanade along the beach and just turn down Elkhorn Avenue. This is Ryan. He's the head brewer at Bob's. You may recognize him. He's filled fermenters at several different breweries, including Red Duck and Bad Shepherd. I've known Ryan for many years now. He's a great bloke. Drop in and say good day. Brand new venue. Great looking tap setup. Plenty of beers on tap of their own. They also have just as many guest taps. And right here we have the chocolate swordfish the Piñata Sour Cherry, the Orchid Avenue Saison, and the Elkhorn Lager. The Surface XPA and the Sunburn. The grain mill is below the brewing room. So they mill the grain down there and it goes up through those two augers and into the mash tun. And then it doesn't have far to go to go through the chiller into a fermenter and bright tank, then into a keg and into the taps. We'll talk about the grain bill in full a little bit later, but this has a kilo of wheat in it, so I mill the wheat separately, so I make sure it's nice and crushed, and you should think about uh, rice hulls when you're using this much wheat. I did wet condition my grain. I try and wet condition my grain for all the brews I do. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link below. I start with my usual 20 litres. The water profile he uses is the yellow and dry profile from Beersmith. If you don't have Beersmith, you can probably look it up online on the Beersmith website, but it's a sulfate ratio. Well, it's 105 sulfate to 45 chloride, just to give you an idea. Two to one. When it comes to the grain bill, he uses a border pale malt from Barrett Burston as his main malt. I had trouble sourcing that malt, and after some research, I found Gladfield Ale to be a good substitute. I'm starting to list my recipes as percentages. I've been talking about that for many years now and it is the best way to list a recipe. If you want to see the exact amounts, they'll be at the recipe link down below. But for this one, it was three kilo of the base malt, 1.25 kilo of the best Munich and one kilo of wheat malt. We're trying to hit an original gravity of around 1.052. It is a better way to list recipes as percentages because every setup will have a different efficiency. And instead of entering all my amounts first and then transferring them to your amounts, you can just put in the percentages straight away and you'll know how much grain to use. My mash was a little gluggy from the wheat, even though I added rice hulls. But once it got going, it settled down and everything was fine. We're shooting for a mash temp of around 66 degrees Celsius or 151 Fahrenheit. 
if there's one thing I know, Ryan is a stickler for his 5.2 mash pH. So I had to cross my fingers, but I hit it spot on that day, so I know he'll be happy. And there was no fudging of the numbers or adjusting mid mash, because this was a live brew day. The full brew day was live, and the whole five hours is up on my Patreon channel. After the full mash was finished, I pulled the basket and I sparge. Again, I sparge with around 15 litres. I try to drain till I get to my 30 litre mark. I turn on the pump coming up to the boil and sieve out some of the junk. There's not much there as usual, but it's better out than in. And a lot of that will be from the wheat that I milled up very fine. So I wait till it comes to a complete boil and I start my 60 minute boil timer. There are no boil hops in this recipe at all. Everything's going in the whirlpool and it's a hot whirlpool. Don't drop it to ADC, this recipe will not work. There's not many breweries, big or small, that drop the whirlpool to ADC. It's more a home brewer thing. There will be certain breweries that will do it, but it's still pretty rare. This recipe will just not work if you drop the whirlpool to ADC. To make this recipe exactly like Ryan does, there are three additions before we get to the end of the boil though. There's Wurflock at 15 minutes, Yeast Nutrient at 10 minutes, and he uses Brutan at five minutes. Brutan's probably not needed on a home brew level. Brewers use it to improve shelf life of their beer. They might make 50 kegs worth of a beer and that might have to last six months. Brutan helps with that. I haven't mentioned it yet, but this is a very Australian beer and we're using Vic Secret, Topaz and Enigma. All three go in the Whirlpool and all three go in the Dry Hop. Again, check the recipe for complete details. When the boil is complete, we wait till the wort settles down a bit then we can start our whirlpool. Once we start our whirlpool, we'll put all our whirlpool hops in. After five minutes, we stop the whirlpool and then we let it settle for another five minutes. The chill on this recipe, you've got about half an hour to chill the whole batch. If you're chilling in the kettle and recirking back in, I'd probably leave it another five minutes. And we hit 1.052, we're dead on the money. I use two packs of Sapphire US05 like I always do, and it was also recommended by Ryan. I'm going to ferment this at 18.5, and I'll put about five PSI on it. If you don't have a pressure fermenter, I wouldn't worry about it, I'd still ferment about 18.5. I'm not using it to suppress any flavors, I'm just using it to make transfer easier and to keep oxygen out. You can see there that the sample's cleared up nicely, and we might be just a little over that 1.0. Five two. People ask how I take samples when it's still fermenting and it's a little bit carbonated. I just pour out some into a cup, pour it between a few cups, and it usually decarbonates enough to take a reading. If not, you can just leave it on the bench for a while. It'll go flat. So I took a reading and decided it was time to dry hop. I could see that the yeast was starting to clear out, but it wasn't quite finished fermenting. That's when I like to dry hop. Again, the exact dry hop amounts will be in the recipe. I then raise the temperature of the fermenter a couple of degrees and leave it three to five days. Like many breweries, he uses Biofine to clear his beer. You can use gelatin at home if you like. I happen to have Biofine here at the moment. I add it to my keg under pressure before I transfer the beer on top. That way I know that it's nice and mixed in. I do have a full video on how I do that, and I'll leave a link for that in the description. Biofine works pretty fast, two or three days usually is okay, depends how much you use. But you don't want to use too much, follow the instructions. Two days later, I take a sample out of the keg, and you can see there, it looks like mud. I discard that, I take another sample, again it's pretty cloudy but then on the third sample, you can see it's starting to clear right up. I gave it another day or two, and it was crystal clear, like you see on the video at the start. <laughs> We're just about to do the tasting, I've drank it all. I'll go and fill it up again. That's better. There's a few questions I'll answer first, because um, I know I'll get asked, and they'll be, how do you know, like this small, uh, brand new brewery in Service Paradise when you live in Melbourne? Well, um, the brewer there, Ryan, which I've mentioned in the video, uh, I've known him for several years now. 
I don't know how long, it must be getting close to seven or ten or something, I, I, I'm not exactly sure, uh, but I met him when he was working at uh, Red Duck, and then since he worked at Red Duck, which was one of my favourite beers at the Ballarat Beer Festival, let me tell you. I'm not sure if he was actually there at that stage, but this uh, red IPA, hoppy, red hoppy ale, I think they're called. Anyway, um, and then he done some time, done some time at the <laughs> um, Bad Shepherd and Clifton Hill. Um, and, and anyway, he's been around, gaining experience everywhere he goes. I have been there three times. They might have been all around the same visit, but I've been there three times. Two of the times uh, he didn't know I was there sort of thing. He'd left. Uh, so, you know, I got to learn the venue and the beers. Um, and then the third time uh, we went and saw what you saw, me walking around the brewery and having a look. And when I first got this beer in the keg, it was very different for me. Um, I've sort of steered away. I mean, I've been brewing a very long time. Um, and some of the hops in this beer in the early days uh, were a little bit hit and miss. And I know some people go, oh, I've loved them all the time, but uh, uh, Vic's Secret's one of them. I, I always found it a little bit hit and miss. Some years it was good, others it wasn't so good. Um, Enigma I hadn't used much of. And the other one, Topaz. Um, Topaz I hadn't used before. So um, tasting this beer, it was very different for me. You know, they're not all American tasting hops, you know what I mean? They're, they're different tasting hops. Um, and at first, when it was fresh in the keg, they cleared up really well. Uh, one, because I, I used, just focusing on the glass, one, uh, because I did use Biofine in it, like he does. And I also used Brutan, as you saw in the recipe as well, but that's more for longevity. But what I was saying, um, now, which it might have been in the keg, a month that the hop flavors have really come together and um oh it's, it's really really nice it's a very different flavor you know it's not my citra um you know amarillo simcoe mosaic type beers i usually do um but I'm, i've really come around to enjoying it in the keg i started rambling on then so i might cut that out what I was saying is it took about two or three weeks and the hops all melted together really, really well. And, and it's sitting in a really, really nice place at the moment. Uh, and I think a lot of that is the topaz. It's a hop I hadn't used before. I really like when I get a beer with a hop I haven't used before and it's good because there's nothing worse you know, when you get one yeah, hop you haven't used before. It's not very good. There's been a lot lately of new, new kind of hops. But I'm really impressed with the, the way this has turned out. It's really, really nice. So a big thank you goes out to Bob's Beers. A big thank you goes out to Ryan. Um, get to the venue. It's a nice little venue. The food's, uh, the food's really nice. Um, oh, a high end, I guess, is the name for it. It's, don't be scared of that high end, though. It's approachable high end. Does that make sense? I liked it, but it's very fancy. It's really, really nice. Get on to it. XBA. I'm glad we got an XBA into the series. I was looking forward to it. And this is a cracker. Bronze medal winner. Thanks Ryan. Thanks Bob's Beers. Get in there, drink, eat and be merry. Get up to Queensland where it's warm, <laughs> especially in winter down here. Uh, thanks to my patrons, thanks to my viewers, thanks to everybody. Like, click, subscribe, all that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, I get confused saying that every time. But take it easy. Uh, and we still have some more coming up, as you know, in the brewery series. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.